Welcome and good morning to Dunning Fine Arts Center's virtual um, art space. Uh, we're so happy today to be speaking with an amazing group of artists um, based in Sarasota who call themselves the Petticoat Painters. We're going <clears> to <throat> be able to hear the story of that group in just a few moments. Uh, we're joined, of course, today with our curatorial director, Catherine Bergman. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We've been looking forward to the show of the Petticoat Painters that was rescheduled from a year or so ago. And now to have everyone here and to have a chance to speak with our special guests. And we're delighted to um, hear a little bit about the history of the group um, and the objectives of the group from um, Evelyn McCorston Peters. Evelyn, if you'll unmute yourself and I've got <clears throat> what you wrote here, but we'd love to hear it from you as well. Okay, um, hi everybody. Thanks for being here this morning. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, read this through. It's a little bit easier than having to read it on the screen. And then um, I might ad lib somewhere, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, just so you know, I became a member of this organization about um, no, five or six years ago. And it is a wonderful, amazing group of women. And I am very proud and happy to be a part of them. So um, during the 1950s, the Ringling School of Art served as a catalyst for establishing a formidable art community in Sarasota, Florida. Um, there was a lot of talent from the women, um, but they were unable to find exhibition opportunities. So Mary Hartman, one of the um, wonderful artists at that time, she had entered a competition and was awarded first prize, but instead of getting the cash prize she received that the men would receive, she received a certificate. And so this was what brought her to establishing a group of women who could exhibit in the area and um, possibly win prizes and do things. So uh, she was a very strong person to go ahead and do this and we're eternally grateful to her. So the initial group of seven women artists chose the name Petticoat Painters to satirize the way women's art was often dismissed. More than 70 years later, we've decided to keep the name. We are one of the longest continuously exhibiting women's art groups in the nation. And the current members have elected to keep this name for the struggle it implies. It has been an ongoing discussion since I've been a member of the group about keeping the name. And I think probably for the first time in a long time, we all saw how appropriate it was for what we're trying to accomplish and we have made peace with the name. <laughs> Recently, there is a sense that inclusion of women in the art world has changed, but it really hasn't. The numbers tell a much different story. In 2018, a study of 820,000 exhibitions across the public and commercial sectors, only one third were by women artists. Members of the Petticoat Painters draw strength from the camaraderie and vibrant association with each other as they recognize the prevailing challenges. The group does not have a unified doctrine about art, rather each artist is encouraged to pursue her own unique path. Today's members are an evolving group of professional contemporary women artists exhibiting together who continue the long and prestigious legacy. Just recently, we have welcomed four new amazing women into our group and are very excited about them exhibiting with us in the future and being a part of us and us learning from them. Membership is limited to 20 carefully selected artists from the Sarasota area. Invitation to the group comes after consideration by the entire group who evaluate the work work ethic and spirit of the prospective member. Over the years, the group has had about 90 members. And after becoming myself, becoming a part of this group and then seeing the process by which we select artists, I'm very proud to be a part of this group. These, we're tough. <laughs> so it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. Um, what we've done. So the Petticoats group has had close to 60 invitational exhibitions. In 2008, they were featured at the Florida State Capitol Building in Tallahassee. A documentary was made of this group in 2015 and showcased at the Sarasota Film Festival. I'm gonna go ahead and read our accomplishments. Um, individual, individual members include exhibits in national and international shows in places as diverse as China, Egypt, 
Spain, Wales, Russia, and Japan. Their work has represented has been represented by important galleries, is included in numerous private and public collections, as well as permanent museum installations. They have been invited to participate in residencies as those of the National Parks Foundation, Hermitage Artist Retreat, and Vermont Studio Center. They have participated in community outreach programs such as the Arts for Special People, which is a nonprofit corporation using art with special populations, Stanford, Connecticut, and Van Gogh of the Susquehanna Museum of Art. Members have received prestigious grants and awards, including the Art and Embassies Program of the United States Department of State and the Pollock Krasner Foundation Grant, and are featured in publications like New American Patio Paintings, Studio Visit, and Artist Magazine, books and countless newspaper articles and reviews. Going forward, each generation of members evolves its own identity framed by contemporary thinking. We believe women's voices united tell a unique and distinctive story. Our shows are important inspiration for all women artists who hold a belief, a firm belief in their vision and persist in pursuing it. That's it. All right, thank you, Evelyn. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, what a, it's a really rich, really rich history. Um, so we're glad to have met all of you <clears throat> through your artwork anyway. <laughs> We've met some of you personally. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look at some of the art and, and meet some of the artists. Um, Catherine, do you have any comments about the history of the group? No, but I, I have enjoyed sharing that it's it's wonderful having the the um a statement card in the gallery and I've enjoyed sharing the background with visitors and uh, particularly the history of the name and uh, it, the show has been especially appreciated by our students. We had a faculty member write us this last week of how they toured the show and um, it, I, I agree with Evelyn that it's a the, the uh, accomplishments of the group and the schooled story of each of them is so impressive. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I think that that class was astounded by the variety of styles and approaches and media and in essence, the possibilities that are in art. So it's very inspiring um, and that's, something that we really cherish in all the exhibitions we put on here is what they can offer to um, our students in terms of growth. So um, our first artist today to speak is um, Lucy Barber. She's um, submitted this really lovely um, minimal palette of still life. Um, Lucy, good morning. Good morning. I have a story I could tell about this. Please. Okay. Um, well, first I wanna thank you for inviting me and all of us to talk here. I don't wanna speak for everybody, but I just am really honored to be with Petticoat Painters and be, to be showing here at, at your center. Um, so this painting is called Yellow Wall in Four Journals and it's part of a series of about 17 paintings. I, I just love the story of this, how it came to, how this whole body of work came about. Um, it's among my archive of paintings. It's not a recent painting. Um, this is the largest of the 17 paintings. It's 37 inches wide and 15 inches high and um, painted in oil. And at the time that I uh, started this, I had just moved to Maine, to Portland, because I, was, I taught up there at two colleges, um, the Maine Art College and Bowdoin College. And I lived in this wooden brownstone style house. It wasn't brownstone, but it was wooden. And I had this beautiful floor through apartment and a north facing studio. And um, oh, I'm a little nervous right now. Um, uh, the kitchen, um, this is called, this is part of the kitchen shelf series and the kitchen, um, had a red floor and yellow walls and two windows facing east and the sunlight 
just blasted through into the kitchen in the mornings. And the room just glowed with this ambient light. And I felt like I was in a Bernard painting, literally, when I was in that room. So it was very inspiring. And um, in addition, my brother had lent me four journals that my father wrote in uh, when he was in World War II. And he, excuse me. <laughs> um, started writing in them when he was uh, on the ship from San Francisco to the islands of the South Pacific. And um, he died young, so I didn't know him well. He had an illness. So I was inspired by that and doing this whole series. So in the kitchen, there was this big old porcelain sink and above the sink was this long white shelf. And the light around the objects on that shelf was just beautiful. It was glowing. There was no direct light, but there was definitely side light. And I just started setting up the journals. And I also um, would take things from the farmer's market that was, you know, local farmer's market. And I would put things up there. I would take things out. It, so it was like this moving um, uh, dialogue of all these objects on the shelf. And I did a whole series based on these, and but it was ever changing. So, you know, if you look at this painting, it doesn't represent the whole series, but it represents it symbolically. But there's a green chili there by a journal, and then there's a red chili by an orange gourd, and there's a yellow chili by a little gourd. And, you know, all those, those were little vignettes for other paintings. And then I ended up doing this painting last. So, um, and it kind of represents it the whole series and you mentioned um, you yeah. mentioned bernard and i was struck um, by this piece in its relationship to um giorgio mirandi oh yeah and except the one fun thing about this is that it you know you could mistake it for a mirandi maybe except for the prescription bottle over on the right <laughs> mm. <laughs> and it pushes oh. it into our times maybe but I yeah like that. well yeah, well, it's a, thank you for commenting on that, actually, because I forgot to mention. Well, my father um, had a long illness, unfortunately, and he died young, as I said. And so I just, I love those bottles because of the, what happens when light passes through them or light is around them. There's this beautiful luminosity. And um, so I included it for that reason. But also, you know, I just thought, well, I'm going to leave that up there for the duration of all of the paintings. And, um, but it also represents illness and health because of my father's illness. But, and I also wanna comment, I also, when I did this series, I remember purposefully committing to each painting would have at least one journal in it or part of a journal. Ah. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah. I, I, I love how, we brought up Mirandi and Mirandi for me in, in school was always very formal. It was always a very formal compositional studies of color and, and whatnot. But this, this takes that work a step beyond and makes it really, really personal. And I, I really like that about this piece. So it's, it's oh, lovely in terms of just pure painting. And then, mm. you know, obviously the story is, is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, so thank, thank you. you, Lucy. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Um, <clears throat> To move move down the gallery here to um, Jackie Clark. Um, Jackie, if you're with us, you can unmute yourself, and we'll hear from you about your piece, um, "Twisted View." I might have to help. Hi, Jackie. Jackie, you're unmuted. If you want, try to speak, we might be able to hear you. Okay, um, Jackie, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna leave you unmuted and um, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the next person, and we'll come back to you though, and hopefully we can um, 
get your uh, your <clears throat> volume um, going. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, we'll, we'll move on to Susie Covert and um, and we'll come back to Jackie. Okay, Susie. <laughs> Let's see if she can hear us. Okay, Susan, um, if you wanna try to unmute yourself. Okay, so I'm sorry, everyone. Um, Susan, we're, Susie, we're gonna move on to the next artist and then we'll come around back to you as well if we can figure it out, okay? Um, so our, after Susie, we wanted to talk to um, Mary Grand Prey, who's got a really beautiful <clears throat> um, abstract piece mm. here. Uh, and this is outside of, I think, a mixed media studio, so. Really beautiful layering. Mary, good morning, how are you? Good morning, thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And um, I just wanna say a thank you to the Petticoat Painters too, because they just recently invited me into the group and I'm just really honored and excited to be a part of this, such a strong group of women painters, thank you. Now you were just in, a, in an exhibition with um, Kathy Wright and, um, uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the third, uh, at Spaces. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was, um, it was a nice mix. Um, we were all quite different from each other, all ab uh, abstract artists, but really different in our approach. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great space down there. I, I really like what, what uh, <clears throat> Marianne's doing. So it is. congratulations. It is. Thank you. Yes. So House of Quiet Rain, um, you have a sort of narrative um, quality to your abstraction. Tell us more about how you came to abstraction and, and the storytelling that's in it. Right. Well, most of my years as an artist have been as an illustrator and many of those years um, as a picture book illustrator. And so um, creating pictures for a narrative was nothing new for me. I've been doing that forever um, until I realized I wasn't quite happy <laughs> as an artist illustrator. So I really knew there was a piece missing for me. And that piece was the freedom that I really feel as an abstract painter now. And so um, even though I'm an abstract painter, I think the, narr the narrative quality of my work just kind of naturally comes through because of my experience as an illustrator. So when I paint, um, I tend to want to give the viewer just enough of something that's familiar to grab onto and then become um, the painting becomes an invitation to walk into the painting and then kind of travel through and find your own journey. So I kind of created that door. You see that fine line drawing up in the upper, um, upper portion of the painting. It's, it's, it's like a doorway, I think, that invites the viewer in to travel through. And the House of Quiet Rain, um, I, I, I lived in Minnesota most of my life. We traveled down to Florida a few years, well, quite a few years ago now. So my husband um, could uh, pursue his career at the Ringling College of Art and Design. Um, but we now live in a house with a, a metal roof and the rain sounds very much different than, than it used to sound up in our house with the, um, the typical, uh, what kind of roof is that? Asphalt or something. Um, so sound is an important part of, of my work as well. Uh, I, I like to listen to piano. I like to listen to um, certain kinds of jazz while I work. And so sound is part of how I paint as well. And um, I just wanted to create a place, a place for someone to walk through and feel maybe comforted by that sound and just a suggestion of rain or a suggestion of a pathway or a place to go into to stay warm. Um, and I love working with shapes and, and differences, texture next to flat, 
Mm -hmm. um, bright next to dull, line work next to brushwork. Those differences are very important to me in my work as well. Yeah, and there's collage elements, as I recall, on, on this piece, yes. Yeah, the pieces are, all my paintings are so layered, they become so heavy with paint. I work on um, cradled panel, wood panels, so that I can really build up the layers of collage and paint. And then I, mm -hmm. I get out my Ryobi sander and sand back and expose parts. And things that happen uh, without my control are some of the, the most rewarding things to discover, those accidents that happen when you're sanding back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's lots lots of layers on those. And, and, and this piece is, um, I think, <clears throat> a couple feet square. And then some of some of the pieces I saw in the in the photos from Mary Ann's were quite large, right? Do you what what kind of scale are you working at? Yeah, I'm I'm working a variety of scales. I have, uh, you know, I. If I want to experiment, I'll get out a bunch of my 12 by 12 inch by 12 inch boards and just kind of play on those. And sometimes they end up being some of my favorite little paintings. Um, and, I, and I'm working up to um, a five by five foot uh, range right now. I don't have the largest studio. My studio was built for an illustrator, not an abstract painter. So, uh -huh. um, so but there's a variety of things on the wall right now, size wise. Great. I, I love the poetry of the title, and I do feel the music in your work. I was very drawn to your piece, but uh, it, it's, it has a definite music, uh, musical composition to me. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and I just wanted to know how, Catherine, your, you and your background, how closely they, in, in terms of coloration, they, they look oh. With the <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to say too, when I was putting up everybody's bios in the gallery, I was just so taken by uh, what what depth each person between studies and exhibitions and backgrounds. And so there uh, you have illustrated some of the Harry Potter books. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that must be a yeah. That must be, a, if there's any kids in your life, that must be a, quite the, the trophy to... Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, um, the kids in my life don't really talk about it that much, maybe because um, they've lived with it and they've grown up with it. And it's just what mom does, you know, but um, it's been it's been quite, quite an interesting part of my illustration journey. And uh, it, it it has its pros and cons, but I I'm, I mostly am grateful for um, the doors that it opened and the people that I got to meet and the kids that are amazing little artists that um, you know you get to see them grow and then um, they're coming through your line to get their book signed and then twenty years later oh, they're oh. coming in with their kids to get their book signed and uh. so <laughs> yes yeah. Oh, thank you, Mary. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. It's fun. Uh, we're going to move over into our jewelry studio sitting area here um, and take a look at this beautiful little jewel of a painting by Nancy Hilscher. Good morning, Nancy. Uh, she was with us. Oh, Nancy has disappeared. Uh -oh. oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. There she is. Oh. Okay. Sorry, Nancy. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Good morning, Nancy. How are you? I'm great. How are you? <clears throat> doing well, doing well. Um, yeah, this is a beautiful little piece that you made here. Um, really supple, uh, gooey, juicy paint. So <laughs> <laughs> tell Thank us a little you. bit more about your inspiration about. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, 
first, I'd like to say thank you for um, for for doing this video. I, it's it's really uh, special. It's also special to be a new member of the Petticoat Painters. I had uh, followed a lot of them uh, before I became a member, and um, when I was uh, uh, invited. Uh, it was really a uh, it was really a special moment for me. Uh, they're they're so talented that I am just honored to be part of this group of of special uh, women artists. Um, I have um, I have taken my artwork uh, from things that are pretty much ordinary, or people might think they're ordinary. I think they're quite beautiful. Um, I enjoy uh, putting together uh, still lifes with bowls of fruit or vegetables or um, simple still lifes, incorporating those images. Um, so I do enjoy taking just simple things uh, and enjoy painting them. I'm, um, I, I want to say I'm inspired maybe by Cezanne or uh, his brush strokes, and so I try to uh, come through the art with my brush strokes in my paintings. Um, usually they're a square format. This is a 12 by 12, and it's actually one of three of the summer bounties. Um, and I have recently uh, jumped into uh, a larger size, for me larger, which is 20 by 20. So. Um, that's a new adventure for me and, and I'm having fun doing that. And I paint both in acrylics and in oils. So it's, it's fun. I'm curious um, to learn that you paint in a square format. Do you have any reason for that or it's just kind of what you like or? It's, you know, it's just kind of what I like. I have a few that I've done in rectangular, but um, I really enjoy the square format on panels uh, and on canvas. And uh, lots of times I will lay a cobalt blue acrylic base as the, uh, 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 the ground on my painting and then go back over that, sometimes leaving some of that blue to show through, sometimes not. Um, but it's, it's kind of a interesting, uh, approach to my art. I love seeing your studio backdrop there with all your your tubes. <laughs> That's probably oh. a great system. How organized it is. It's a complete opposite for me. <laughs> well, well, I think that's just the, the best corner of the room that I could choose because everywhere <laughs> else it's just piles of brushes and paints and containers. Uh, but uh, it was on a it was on a cover of a magazine. And so I uh, kind of went, how did they do that? And ah. managed to, you know, simplify it with a, a foam board painted and push pins and tiny bull clips. So it works great. So oh, I know when I'm out, and, but it, yeah, it keeps me a little organized. I was drawn to the composition of this piece, Nancy. So uh, I could see we're working in the square. Uh, really brings uh, the composition choices to the forefront. Thank you. I, um, I, I will take, I will set this up um, and then take my own photos of it um, and then incorporate using the photos when I paint. Um, I did try at one point painting while the fruit was still fresh in the bowl looking down um, unfortunately, sometimes it ripens a lot faster than I'm done painting. <laughs> I wondered if you were a gardener when I was, but I see that you, you uh, just shop locally. Yes, yes. There's, um, there's beautiful things in our area, and I just think it's a, a nice piece that, uh, or any of the pieces here, you know, they brighten up rooms and they make uh, they might hold a special memory for someone even if they're visiting here um, I, I just think it's it's fun to paint what um, 
what we have around us. Yes, and you're originally from Chicago. Yes, yes. Um, graduated um, from the American Academy of Art um, and practiced graphic design uh, for many years and just recently retired. So the invitation oh, to join wow. the Petticoats came at the most absolute perfect time in my life. Oh, that's great. Yes. And I, if we have a chance at some point, uh, once we've spoken with uh, the rest of our crew, I'd love to hear about how everybody goes about making the choices and uh, hearing that it's a tough group. And I'm sure it is, but I, I'm intrigued by that. If, uh -oh. every, if people have to duke it out and advocate <laughs> and um, argue, argue over <laughs> Because it's because the number is is limited. Up to twenty, I, I think, yeah. is what we read. Right, uh, right, mm -hmm. just twenty. Yes, wow. yes. Very honored is how I feel. Very yeah. honored. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an extraordinary group of artists. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. Yeah, we and I've I've enjoyed looking at this piece just in terms of pure painting. You know, we I remember in college we had an exercise. One of our professors was very much a colorist and she um, asked us to paint fruit but to keep painting it as the week went along so you do a, a painting a day of a banana and it would get browner and browner <laughs> <laughs> so I don't paint fruit anymore <laughs> thank you Nancy thank you thank you uh Okay, well, so we're going to jump from uh, representation to into abstraction uh, and take a look at um, Judy Just, who's she's just down <clears throat> one piece over from, from Nancy's. Um, and this is a really rich, uh, layered piece. So I'm interested in hearing from Judy about the different kinds of techniques and approaches she's using. Um, in her painting. Good morning, Judy. Sorry, Judy, we'll have to unmute yourself. Sorry. Uh, thank you for inviting us. And uh, thank you, Petticoat Painters, uh, for inviting me to be part of it for the second time because when I moved away, I dropped out. And when I came back, I was graciously invited to rejoin. It. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, okay, that's weird. Just a second. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I started out as a figurative painter and um, I used to do draw, uh, silver point, which I look at every once in a while and it amazes me I used to do those. Uh, I have morphed into abstract and it went from figurative to abstract of, of course, abstract from, and now this is totally abstract, sort of. Uh, I incorporate, my, my thing is color. And the other thing I love is to explore new materials and how things work together and how they don't. Uh, my career has been long in teaching. That's one of my fortes. I've taught printmaking for many years and mm -hmm. I love printmaking. Um, this work has evolved. I have a series of these and they're the chaos series, uh, chaos slash COVID series. And it's these evolve over time and I put them up in the studio. This is, I think, 40, 30, 36 by 36, I always use square. I'm very comfortable with square format. I've done it for years. I do not like other shapes. Um, I do them once in a while just to remind myself. And uh, these are, I use paint, um, the tubes that are the writing with paint with uh, acrylic, this is acrylic oil bar, uh, texture. I use a lot of pigments from a company in New York that supplies pure pigments. 
and they have colors anybody else has. Um, and this series started, a friend of mine, I've been working on this painting for about eight months and I finally, it went from my studio to the garage, the studio to the garage. And a friend of mine saw it one time when it was in the house and she said, you know, that's good. It needs to, you need something else. So I started putting these layers of direction over them. And that gave me a new way to work. So I use tape. Um, I use all kinds of textured things. And it's just, as I walk through the studio, these things speak to me. And I love doing them. I don't, it takes a long time for them to uh, develop. So I work on other things. I love pouring paint. Um, and I love working with color. I have a series. I don't know if you can see behind me, but the, this one is all about pigment and texture. And this one is a print, it's a monotype. Oh. And I used to have a large press, which I sold to a woman who just loves it up in Lutz. And a printmaking is, it's been part of my art life for many, many, many years. I went to Washington University in St. Louis. I have a degree from there. I studied in Europe. I studied in Mexico and uh, mm. I taught in the West. I lived in Santa Fe for a long time. Um. I taught printmaking there. I have um, had the opportunity to work with some of the innovators and creators of the new paradigm of printmaking, non-toxic. Yeah. And I just feel very blessed to have this art career. And someone said to me a couple of years ago, why do you still make art? Because I'm 81. And I said, because I can't not make it. Uh, and I just keep doing it. And, you know, it ends up in the garage. Lucky, lucky for us. <laughs> Thank you. And it yeah. ends up in somebody, I, I give things away on occasion. And if somebody really, really, really likes it, I'll give it to them. Oh. But these are my babies and I don't let go of things until I've lived with them and they're done and then they get moved on. So, yes. and this is yeah. a wonderful group of people, just a wonderful group of people. And I'm so very, very honored to be part of it again. Mm. And um, I was fortunate to know, know Marty Hartman because I've been around the group for a long time. So, anyway, thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, I love this this pink line that starts all the way in the back, comes out yeah. to the front, and then yeah. hot, goes back into hiding. <laughs> that was the last thing I did, and that's not a color that I normally use. Yeah. It is an interesting color, yeah. Yeah, and it's pure, out of the tube, and oh. I, when I put a mark on a canvas or on a plate to print, I start a dialogue. And it's a dialogue with my, the work and me. And it always ends up differently than I think it's going to. So I've mm. kind of given that one up. And um, it just, it's an amazing dance that I have with my art. You're and a paint whisperer. Yeah, I'm a paint <laughs> I have synesthesia for color. Oh, wow. And um, I feel color. And so oh. I feel the next color to go down. Oh. Yeah. That's an interesting discussion with artists in anesthesia. Oh, in indeed. Yeah. I really, uh, I, oh, when you talk about feeling, it, the, the way the pink meets the yellow is really dramatic for me. It kind of swallows it, but it doesn't. Yeah. There's a vibration yeah. there. And it's not uh, something intellectually I would ever thought of, ever. Yes. This is not an intellectual exercise that I do. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it wonderful it is. <laughs> to it be really free, freed from, from those constraints? Yes. And every time I have a set idea, I want to do it this way, it never, ever, ever works out. <laughs> and I wanted to say two other things. I'm very fascinated. I'm really fascinated with India 
and uh, the Middle East and China. Oh. So my work reflects a lot of that. Okay. And I truly believe that mm -hmm. I am a channel for the creative power for my higher power. Oh. So it's not my work. It's the universe work. Universe. Uh -huh. It may sound a little Pollyanna-ish, but so what? Not at all. And I, I felt, I really feel the presence of uh, your travels or studies in Mexico and Greece. I feel it. I feel the vibrance of some of those um, Arizona, New Mexico. It seems like you're drawn to very vivid uh, landscapes and uh, clearly color. Yeah, I am. And yeah. thank you for noticing that. Um, when I, I, spent, I lived here for a long time, then I moved out to New Mexico and my whole palette had to change mm -hmm. because of the environment. I'm very affected by environment. I know we all are. And I added grays and grege and neutrals. And it just was magical because it pumps up the yes. vibrancy of color. Yes. Yeah. It's fun. It really is. Well, I never would have guessed that you're 81. That's incredible. <laughs> and you inspire. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I did want to say one thing about that. As one ages, you go through stages, of course. And life is very different at 81, at 80 than it was at 75. So I have to approach creativity and work, ability to work in a different way. Yes. Hmm. It's just a heads up for the future guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I just wanna say that one of our faculty members, she's not teaching so much right now, but she's one of my best friends is uh, going strong at 93, an abstract painter. But yeah, yeah, she uh, goes and paints in a barn in upstate New York every every summer. Good for her. Yeah. I'm going to go out swinging paint. <laughs> swinging and slinging. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Judy. Judy. <clears throat> uh, the, the cleansing qualities of art. <laughs> yep. yep. Keeps us clean. Um, no. That's amazing. I hope I'm still working at 80. <laughs> Will be. Um, oh, we have another uh, sort of really bright, energetic piece um, here from Susan J. Klein um, called Tada. <laughs> Susan, are you with us? Yes, there she is. Sorry, Susan, we have to unmute you here. Yeah, I think I'm okay now. There you go. Oh, yay. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> I think Judy's a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, Give it a whirl. <laughs> um, well, I love this piece. Yeah, this oh, thank you. Susan, yes, and it's featured yeah. on their invite. Yeah. Really that was a surprise to me. I had no idea you were featuring it, so to speak. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to dive in on this. It's, it's uh, a relatively new direction for me, uh, built on an old direction. Um, a couple years ago, when the pandemic hit and all that, um, I started, I think about that time. Anyway, um, I decided to do some sketch paintings to loosen up. My uh, paintings before, I had always um, outlined carefully every object in black lines. Mm. Um, and I thought I needed to loosen it up a little bit. Um, and I started, and I'm not sure why, but with uh, red cadmium as the base color, uh, not uh, 
as opposed to you know a white gessoed background. To me, the 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 red was the first layer. Mm. I began a series of sketch paintings where I just took a uh, Sharpie oil paint pen oh. and uh, drew directly on the canvas and then filled in, which was the opposite of what I used to do. I used to do the shapes, colors, and then outline them with Sharpie oil paint pens. Oh. So I drew first, colored in, but let it slop over, so to speak, the paint slop over the lines here and there, sometimes putting them back in. Um, I decided, and I also usually colored uh, areas uh, solidly, uh, more like the leaves you see in the foreground of this. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to break that up as well. So I decided to try using these small strokes to build up areas of color instead of um, broad, broader brush strokes. Um, I've always painted with the shape that I'm painting in mind so that they followed boundaries of the shape, the brush strokes. Mm. Um, but here, um, like I said, I started just kind of filling in with uh, small strokes, um, very much uh, influenced by Van Gogh. You know, I didn't want to be a... <laughs> Uh, copy, copy, but uh, I liked his way of, of applying paint, and so uh, decided to apply it that way. Uh, I wanted the red to keep showing through. It was, it was not to be hidden, as most uh, base colors uh, do, uh, but it's also a process that, again, I'd always used uh, letting the ba I, I would create a base color and on purpose let it vibrate with the, the color that was on top, the la next layer of color. I appreciate that. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's a really effective technique to, uh -huh. to me, it, it really, now remember the size of the piece is, is sizable. It's four by three, I think. Yeah. Um, so it kind of takes up a lot of your, your personal space <laughs> but it just really um, encapsulates the heaviness of Florida air and the heat and the humidity yeah. for me. Yeah. Another thing I really like about this painting is, you know, you talk about, you approach this painting in a sort of opposite kind of way than you normally do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, you know, that we talk about as educators is um, how color acts in terms of space and normally you know, warm colors will come forward and cool colors will go backwards. But here you've done the opposite. <laughs> and the cool, this beautiful, cool green plant, you know, is up in the foreground and it, it really um, is effective in, in creating that sense of space. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've always uh, gone by, you should know the rules to break them. And I've never learned the rules very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never paid close attention to that. Uh, the trees right in the center, the plants right in the center, that's fine with me. <laughs> that's, to me, that makes it a stable, um, uh, it, it, center, it anchors the composition. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all lined up and you're not supposed to do that, I think. Right. <laughs> I think I've been told. Supposedly, yeah. Supposedly, but mm -hmm. you know, um, and, the, and I didn't finish uh, the sky, so to speak. Usually I complete the whole, you know, color, the next layer is applied over everything. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, I thought, this is pointless, it's done. It doesn't need, yeah. it doesn't need to be covered up. It's working with the painting that's going on. Mm, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, love the, I love the drawing, the line element to this painting. Oh, thank you. I, I enjoy drawing. Yes. And actually, and this, this was made, um, this is based on a sketch. Uh, my daughter uh, had uh, enrolled me <laughs> as a Christmas present in the Brooklyn Museum sketchbook 
program. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Uh, in 2019. And so I went around my, I, I do a lot of sketching and painting from Mayaka River State Park down here. Yes. And um, so I went around and made these sketches. So this was originally a five inch by seven inch sketch. And I just blew it up. I mean, not, not projected. I mean, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, has, I it, blew it up. <laughs> yeah, no, it really, it really has that quality. It right. really has that quality. And I think that's what makes it such a strong piece is the immediacy of it. I think there's a sort of immediacy to the mark making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah, wonderful. Anyway. And, and you, you uh, make your uh, statement of affinity to Van Gogh and I see Bernard <laughs> in there too. Oh. Yeah, the, with the palette and, and also the, the, um, that the mark making, yeah, mark the making. brush. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And I, you know, the, um, I don't know if it needs to be said, but the date down at the bottom is not the date that it was painted. It's the date that the sketch was originally made. Uh, so I was, uh, I don't know if, it, <laughs> I don't know why, what my point was in doing that, but uh, it's a reference back to these were sketch paintings. I. Yeah, I love the I don't know what I was, you know. Well, what you reference in your statement is the the breadth of your practice. So you participated in a plein air event in the Grand Canyon and uh, you, uh, four, so you, four times for uh yeah. celebrations of art. Yeah. Very interesting. Artist in residency program in the national parks. Yeah. Really, I've I've written wonderful. a book with with um, I've pu recently published a book of my uh, experiences in the national parks called National Park Artist. Oh. But I published it myself, so it's not widely available, <laughs> but, it's, but it's done. But yes. Uh, we know where we can get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just through me. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've, I have been doing landscapes for over 30 years uh, before that. Um, it was hard edge and, uh, which segued into, uh, feminist imagery around the seventies. And then, uh, when all my education and coursework was done, I went into landscapes and that was it. Uh, yeah. well, I, so. I find all the, um, inspiration I need from a landscape, from the earth, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. <clears throat> uh, thanks for sharing, Susan. That's, yeah, really. Thank you, Susan. Really lovely piece. We enjoyed thanks. seeing it Thank every day. You. Thanks. Um, our next uh, artist is Jana Millstone, um, who Catherine and I happen to be, I think, most familiar with um, because we've worked with Jana a few times in the past. Um, and she's entered this really very, very interesting piece. Um, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm excited to hear more about this one, Jana. <laughs> well, it's about, can you see me? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. It's about dismantling the status quo. Um, my whole life, wherever I went into bank lobbies or museums, any public space, any boardroom, there would be a pompous, self-satisfied, entitled gentleman <laughs> ensconced in a gilded frame staring down at me. And I kept thinking, every time I went to a museum, I kept thinking, I have to do something with this. And I thought, what's the best way to take him down? <laughs> have him surrounded by a bunch of little girls in tutus and high tops. <laughs> um, a lot of my work is about um, thinking about power and power structure um, and trying to invert that power. And I often do it with children, but not always. Um, the big thing for me is scale on these. Sometimes the children are huge and the adults are very small. In this case, I just wanted lots of lots of them. Um, 
And I had to think about the trappings of success and what had made him so, and the like of him, had made him so um, pleased with himself. And, and all of the, the historical paintings where the artists were um, asked to show uh, the wealth that the, the sitter had accrued um, and so I had, I spent a lot of time thinking about the, the buttons and the, the watches and the, the satin um, silk tie and the, the, all of these things that the, the um, cufflinks, um, all of these things that are, are signs and symbols that, that shout. I mean, I could have had dollar signs all over the portrait and it would have, it, it would have worked the same way. Um, and then, so for my uh, little girls, I had to give them ammunition um, and started collecting reference on tools of destruction. So I have <laughs> acres and acres of reference about um, power tools and chainsaws and fishing reels. Um, and from a, a plastic sense of, the, of how the composition was done, I, I really wanted him to Uh oh. Oh. Jenna, you are frozen. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. To be very rigid. I wanted him. Sorry. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I wanted him to be very rigid and very proper, and that the only clue to his discomfort was his hands are starting to bend and flex. Um, <laughs> and contrast that with the flurry of these little girls going all over them, all over him. Um, and I thought for a long time about um, the idea of doing this as a, um, a very violent painting, but I thought that it would lose its um, endearing quality. I really wanted it to be embraced so people would enjoy it rather than be revolted by it, mm -hmm. as I was by the topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I... Ultimately, the most important thing was that the little girls were united in their, and they were very industrious. And that's really what I was thinking about the whole time. I really wanted them to be the next generation. I mean, I, when I thought about it, I thought, well, I could do something about women in power suits. And I thought, no, it's really the entitlement of this next generation of girls who can be just what they are and still invert the power structure that they can be assuming their place in this frame a few years from now, hopefully. I love um, that, I love that. And the other thing is that I didn't want this to be um, painted too realistically on one hand, but I didn't want it to be too um, cartoony on the other. So I kind of, tried to strike a balance with it. Um, it's part of a series of paintings that I call Fables for Our Times, um, mostly about social issues and my observations and my anger um, about a lot of things that are uh, prevalent in, in the world that I live in, um, mostly and mainly from a control standpoint and from a feminist standpoint. Um, this particular series is trying to be comical and light and pack a little bit of a punch in a very carefully tutued covered glove. Um, <laughs> but it's, um, and I thought that the gilded frame was a, a real coup. I had found it in a, in a store for a, a very reasonable price and had it sitting in my studio for some time before I, I was able to find a good use for it. <laughs> Perfect. Anna, we have a question coming in from the chat. <clears throat> um, and I'm, we already know the answer, but I, I just want to let you talk about it. This one girl in the corner is, the question is, is that girl part of the painting or is it an external object? And so we'll go back to this picture here. And this is very, um, very interesting, innovative, I think, um, that it is an external object. 
How did you come to that? I do a lot of three-dimensional um, pieces of work. Some of them are completely three-dimensional. Uh, very often I have elements and characters straying from the confines of the rectangular frame. Um, I've done a whole series, I think you probably see one in the background here of, um, of critics. So I have my little critics, three-dimensional critics um, <laughs> assembled all around my studio to keep me in line. Um, <laughs> And they're cut out of, I have a jigsaw, the original ones when I started doing them, I was cutting them with a handsaw. Now I, I use a little, um, a little jigsaw and I cut them out and paint them. Actually, this painting had an, another um, little girl who was repelling um, from a string down the, mm. uh, the thing, but it was getting too complicated visually and I thought I would leave her out for... I don't know for the discretion, but I really liked her. She had a, a little helmet on and, and uh, a satin <laughs> robe. I brought a group of, uh, of uh, collectors through the art center yesterday. It's a group of, of women and uh, they were very captivated by this piece and clustered around it and taking photos. That's nice yeah, to so it was, it was yeah. quite the topic. Yeah, and, I, I, and you work, you, uh, we were speaking about a little bit before the program began, but Jana, I'm familiar with several bodies of work that are so different from the next that you have created. Well, it's really the concept that drives the work. So um, I also have a series of women living under Islamic um, fundamentalism and it's a much more sober series it's painted in a very different style I think I have a painting behind me that's from that veil group um, and there was no way I could bring humor to that um, I also um, have a group of about succession that I'm and I'm working on that in tandem now with um, some fiber work about the, the legacy of, of women's influence um, throughout civilization, throughout history, without, without um, any accolades, and, and most of the work is anonymous. Um, it's the most beautiful, beautiful work done in really ephemeral materials. So that's a theme that I'm, I keep coming back to, and I'm, uh, it's kind of come to the forefront uh, of my studio at this point. So it's, I'm, I'm not married to the technique as much as what I want to use it to say. Yes. Um, but each time it's another discovery process and this discovery is fun, but it's really scary. You know, I don't, I don't consider myself a realist painter, but I needed a, some sense of, of reality to convey this, the particular group that the iconoclast is part of. Um, mm. And so I, you know, it's a study period that, that's involved in each tangent that, that I kind of travel on. Yeah. Very powerful. Yeah. And we'll have to, we'll have to stay in touch about your, your fiber body of work because yeah, as you may know, we do a biannual fiber. I've it's seen it, was extremely impressed. Mm -hmm. He was really blown away by that show. It's wonderful, just mm -hmm. wonderful. It's great to have your work um, back in the center, Jana. Thank and, you. Yeah, Thank I second Catherine's emotion about looking forward to how you proceed with your newest body of work. So thanks, thanks so for... much. I, I love the Dunedin Fine Arts Center. I think it's astonishing. It's a, it's it's like a ma major museum and the the interesting um, and uniquely different shows that you mount are always so impressive. I just wish Sarasota is about an hour and a half and maybe further for people who live in the south of Sarasota to get to you. But um, for anybody in the outlying area, it's really worth the trip. It's, it's really wonderful. And I just wanted to say one more thing about the, the petticoats. It's been one of the highlights of my life to belong to this group. Um, we are tough, but we're really not tough with each other. And I just wanted to add that. I think oh. we're very, very supportive. Um, and it's an astonishingly interesting and fun group to belong with. 
Yes. Thank you, Dana. Thanks. Um, yeah, next, we'll, we're going to flip back to some abstraction here. <laughs> we keep going back and forth um, with Evelyn McCorst and Peters. Um, actually, Evelyn has two pieces in this show. So this is going to be a little bit interesting where this one is abstract and the other is um, kind of referential. But I look forward to hearing from Evelyn about how she walks that line. Evelyn, are you? Yes. Yes, I am. I Good morning. Am. My, my lines are always pretty wobbly, so um, <laughs> hopefully I can right. explain that. Um, actually, I, I have never been an abstract painter before. I did a little bit in college and was really inspired by the artist Sonia Delaunay. Matter of fact, I have a painting that I completed um, such a long time ago. It's actually hanging in my stairwell. But um, I've had, uh, I've never completed a formal education in art, but I've um, had an ed education in a lot of different ways. And uh, I was fortunate when I came back down to Sarasota, I had lived here in the early nineties before, and I um, worked for the prop shop for Ringling Brothers. And that in itself was a huge education um, of materials and color. And I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to start painting again when I married my husband. And um, I am forever grateful for that. And I started really with nature, which is the other piece that you'll see. But um, about three years ago, I had a very large upheaval in my life. And um, right after these things happened, I returned home here because I've traveled quite a bit. And I pulled out this very large canvas that I had and I just started to draw on it and then paint. And this is when I started going towards the abstraction. I've always been really interested in the boundary of where um, urban and rural environments meet. Um, I, I am a city girl and now I live out in Mayaka City which is not a city. <laughs> it's very, very rural back here. Matter of fact, um, a part of the Mayaka River is in my backyard. So it is a beautiful, beautiful place, but I, I um, really like cities the most. So I think this switch to abstraction was kind of trying to bring in how I solve the borders between rural and urban environments. And, um, it's all about the boundaries and escaping the boundaries. And when these things happened several years ago, it was a real opportunity for me as a person to escape some boundaries that had been set on me for quite some time. And I just went with it. And the abstraction is continuing and continuing to grow into different places. It was um, very much like abstract expressionism in the beginning. And then I started this series here, which is definitely more graphic. But it was all about for me drawing the shapes and then taking the paint and intersecting the shapes. Like I said, I haven't really had that kind of formal education and I kind of go by intuition. And I'm constantly amazed when I step back at the end of the painting and think, wow, that actually really makes sense. <laughs> so I'm always pleased that that's the overall effect at the end. I'm starting to abstract series right now and um, I just finished the three main pieces and it's quite quite large I I love 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 to work large but um, my studio is actually an old travel trailer that I traveled in years ago so um, it doesn't have a lot of wall space but um, I am about to attempt working extremely large in a very large Quonset hut that I have on the property. So I have no idea what I'll do with them once I paint them, but I'm really looking forward to it. I've been really, during the um, pandemic, I went through and cleaned my studio and found all these um, materials that I haven't used before. And that's where the drawing in particular comes into this piece. Like those black lines are actually charcoal. And some of there's some colored lines that melt, melt into the painting there that um, are pastel. And in the bottom 
oh. left corner when you're looking at it you can see this little orange stripe that's through that pink bar and that's actually spray paint i have a real desire to um learn how to use spray paint and i've been really studying graffiti because i just i just love the size and the freeness of it and this abstraction has really helped me to loosen up because you'll see from my other piece it's pretty tight so i must say i i'm really enjoying this new journey that i'm taking with my work um i think it's more representational of my current state of mind um i was one of the artists that during the pandemic that really struggled creating um and most people look and like well you've done an awful lot but for me it was it was very challenging um and i was really frightened by that but then, you know, I kind of got online and I saw that there was really kind of two groups of artists. There's the ones that were really inspired by it and just kept going and the ones that had no idea what to do. And I, I was one of those people. So I think that's freed me up um, to really take a next step. And I realize now that it, it really was for me to step out of where I was prior because these things that have happened have, have totally changed my lifestyle and to move on to something new. And um, I'm really enjoying doing it. I, I can honestly say I think so much more about my paintings now as I'm painting them. Mm -hmm. I have slowed down considerably. I, I sit sometimes in my studio and I just look at them. A lot of times I'm like, okay, I like this, but is it any good? And I'm still <laughs> answering that question. So um, it's been, really fun doing something new and uh i really look forward to keep on going with it and to um establishing a new way of expressing myself i never really think about my paintings too much until now so this has been a really um interesting change for me to really put some thought into it and i i find it really interesting that i'm thinking so much more about these paintings that are big blocks of color than I ever did when I was painting all those tiny little leaves. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I never, I just kind of went with them and they have been extremely successful. Matter of fact, that abstract at, ended up in this show because the other tree painting I was going to put in um, sold. So um, oh, I'm, I'm really grateful that this got into the show because I haven't really had an opportunity yet to um, show my abstractions. And it's always good to see it in another environment and to get other people's feedback on it because you know it's it's a new it's a new journey for me. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, it must be nice to be part of such a strong group, experienced group, mm. when you're starting something new and sometimes you get stuck and need some feedback. You have some really great <clears throat> voices. Yeah. It has been. Um, really it, it sounds kind of corny but joining the petticoat painters has been a, one of the biggest um influences on me not so much in a style but in the opportunity to let go and to try new things and um i've been fortunate to be a part of a lot of uh, several residencies and the last residency i went in is the one that i took much more as an experimental thing and it was because of the direction of the woman that ran the residence she you know when we got done our greeting that day she goes go make bad art and i'm thinking well i can do that uh, <laughs> went, wow and, that's a great that's a great manifesto oh it I was mean, it just so frees wonderful. you instantly right yes yes and yeah. i did i made some really bad art but out of that <laughs> and i still have it i'm never going to get rid of it because out of that came some really good things and mm. it allowed me to really loosen up and to move on and i i became friends with a great group of artists there and it was also when i realized that i needed to be around more artists and this invitation to the petticoat painters came right around that time um, and I've never been an overly social person, but um, being a part of this group uh, has actually helped me in that way, too. I'm really not uncomfortable anymore <laughs> around a group of people. And these women are just, they're the, actually, they're the best thing that happened to me since I moved it back down here. I can honestly say that they, I'm just glad to know that they're there. And I kind of feel like I have a whole group of people that has my back. And that's really important. 
Yes. And, you know, I'm glad you uh, referenced the residency programs that you've been a part of. That's something that I've noticed in the last uh, maybe five or six years of shows in and out of the art center of how key uh, residencies have been to many of the artists that we've been uh, inviting. And it, I'm just, yeah. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And when I first started, thought, okay, I'm going to do this. I, I needed to create a consistent body of work because I didn't really have one. So I did. And I thought, okay, I'm going to practice applying. And I applied to three residencies and um, at that time, and I got them all. And I thought, oh, dear God, what am I going to do? Wow. So I was Love basically that. for four months on an artist residency, which was um, incredibly exciting. Two national park ones, and they were all so completely different. And where I live is it's very isolated. And the first residencies I applied for were, you know, you go into the national park and you're by yourself, you know, except for the people that might be visiting the park. And also I thought, why am I doing this? I'm by myself all the time. I need to go to residencies <laughs> where there's going to be other artists around me. And no matter how much I got from the uh, national park residencies, which are absolutely amazing. And I encourage everybody to try to get one of them. I have found that the residencies that I took with other people, I, I grew a lot more. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the women that I made, I went to Gentel in Wyoming and, and I was sitting there one night with these, these four other women and I'm like, wow, nobody seems like taken aback by how I speak and how I talk. And I said something and she goes, oh, that's because we're all just a bunch of really strong people that wanna put our opinion forth and we're not offended when somebody doesn't agree with us or, or blurts things out. And I thought, oh my God, that's it. <laughs> I finally have found my people. And um, I think the residencies are just such an amazing opportunity to go to a new place. When I was in Wyoming, I looked out over the Sierra Nevadas and I thought, oh my God, my art has brought me here. And that was a really um, confirming, affirming um, realization for me so they're they're a big deal they're yeah that they're, sounds that sounds like some really incredible experiences they were um, wonderful yeah and um, i've had a lot of incredible experiences <laughs> but those yeah. are some of my best ones i i think it, it's so interesting to hear from everyone about their experiences and um how varied and then but also there's a sort of similar thread you know that trying new things seems to be a, a big thread in everyone's story here yeah. So thanks for sharing, Evelyn. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> uh, then our next artist is Judy Lyon Schneider. She also has two pieces in the show, um, some smaller works, framed works, mixed media collage. Nice. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in these pieces. And I'm sorry, we, the ref I had to get the reflections off. So, but these are really yes. very interesting yeah. visual, visually. Judy, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Judy. I love Hi. your work. Yes, very, very yeah. dry your pieces. Love them. Thank you. Um, I, I guess I'm basically a printmaker. Mm. Printmaking is the basis for a lot, not all of my work. And um, I also have in the past, COVID of course has <laughs> altered lifestyles, but I love to travel and to uh, cultures that particularly have um, a different way of life than you know our Western way. And because I have traveled in groups, there's no time to stop off and sketch something that might be of interest. So I have used my camera as a sketchbook. And this was before the iPhones. And I still uh, really, I rarely use the iPhones for photos that will have any meaning for me. And <clears throat> this one um, in particular, the center section of it is in Havana. And um, the two side uh, uh, sides of it are also 
I believe it was Savannah, it might have been some other part of Cuba, but I, with my camera, I tend to see things in an abstract way. Um, I do lots of close-ups rather than um, uh, a generic scene. My feeling is if I want to see the whole city, I can buy a postcard. That's not what uh, stands out to me. And um, I use all different mediums. Um, I'm a mixed media person. I like trying and experimenting new things. I recently sold my etching press. So now I'm going to be trying my hand at some uh, hand printing. And it's exciting and scary. And um, it will have a totally different look. The work that I do is not necessarily as small as these, but these, uh, the two pieces were done from um, using the solar uh, printing. Yeah. Where I, from photographs or I've drawn aspects of it and made solar plates um, out of them and used the etching press. I will not be able to do that any longer. So <laughs> I'm kind of scared and yet eager to try um, new ways. But this also has collage components to it. And, um, and, and Judy, um, is, is it just these two pieces or is it your entire body of work that is kind of focused on this black, white and red kind of palette? Uh, it's really just these two. I have several pieces. I was into a black and white and love the red pop that you get uh, with black and white. But that's, um, I kind of go back and forth and try different mediums and depending uh, if I've traveled or what what's going on in my life as to what direction I take. Um, when I've traveled, well, not so locally, but within the States, I will travel with watercolors, which I hadn't used for a zillion years. Ah. So I will incorporate that at some point with printmaking as well and collage. Well, we look forward to your, your next phase and I applaud you for your, your uh, changes. Well, it's, yeah. it's exciting materials, exactly. yeah. you know, what can you do with them? And um, it's, you know, it's been a wonderful adventure. It's been a wonderful part of my life being part of the Petticoats. They are an exceptional group of women. Uh, no two of us are even close to being the same and nor is our work, but it's, um, it's an inspirational experience and very, as I think it was Evelyn who said to know that there's a group who have your back, so. Yeah. That's what I've been into. Oh, thanks for sharing, Judy. Thank you, Judy. Right, yeah. These are really exciting, exciting images. I think very evocative for me, mysterious. So yes, quite compelling. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, excited to see what you do with your new materials for sure. Thank you. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, I think we have um, Jacqueline Clark. Are, are you able to unmute yourself now? Are we? I see your video. We don't hear you yet. Jackie, we just need you to get you to unmute yourself um, if you can. I can see you. Hmm. 
Stand by. Thanks for your patience, everybody. We'd love to hear from everyone. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I think, um, okay, let's, let's move on to Susie Cover. I see you're here as well. Okay, I can see you, but I can't hear you. You can or you can't. Can you can. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna do some technical stuff here real quick. Susie, um, I can't hear you for some reason. Jackie, I can hear two of you because you have two devices going. Yes, I don't yes, have, I don't uh, have a speaker on. on. Hang on, hang on. Can you hear me now? Yes, there's a very strong echo. Um, How about now? Okay, let's try that. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Jackie, but it's very echoey because there's two devices going. So we'll have to choose one of them. Um, Can you hear me now? It could be that that Jackie has her phone connection in addition to a, a laptop yeah, or- She has a phone and a, and a computer going. She just needs to hang up the phone or sign off the phone. We have three, actually she's on, there's th three of her on right oh, now. Oh no, <laughs> uh oh. I think what's happening is her computer doesn't have a speaker and that's why she went on to her phone. Oh. So she probably needs to turn off the computer. Turn off the computer and do it on the mm -hmm. phone. Yes. She oh, won't yeah. have the same experience, but we'll be able to talk to her. Yeah. There we go. Yes. Did you hear that, Jackie? Okay, and I see Susie is connecting to the audio. Um, so hopefully, and just I'm only doing this is Evelyn. I'm only doing this because I, at one point, we had a Zoom meeting and as a group, and we spent most of the time getting everybody onto the Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right now, Susie has been connecting to the audio for the entire time we've been on this call. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that too. Out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, she's not connecting. No. Um, uh. And um, Jacqueline is, one of her devices is still with us, but um, I, I don't know, we're not, oh, she, I think her computer is still with us and we can't hear that. So, uh. oh. okay, well, um, hmm. We've, we, we are um, well over an hour. So thanks for everyone for hanging in there. And we just love hearing all the stories. And so yeah. thanks for sharing. Um, maybe in the interim, we can um, talk about some upcoming stuff here. <laughs> like I said, uh, this is recorded and so it, um, We'll send a, a message to um, all the petticoat painters, but for non petticoat painters um, who are with us today, it'll eventually uh, end up at the Deneen Fine Arts Center YouTube page um, after it's polished by our marketing team and it can be shared and viewed um, ad infinitum until the internet dies. Um, so that's a really nice resource. Um, and, and then, as you can see, we have 
oodles and oodles of content on there. Um, so lots of good stuff from artists all over the nation, really, and internationally too. Um, and then we just wanna promote our big uh, annual Trashy Treasures event, which we're so happy to have um, in person this year, uh, kind of, it's a hybrid. It's and we have um, the next three weeks are going to be vir virtual uh, silent auction. Uh, we can go to defact.org and sign up and bid on items. Um, they close out every Friday. I think it's 25 per week and leads up to our big Trashies party on Friday, March 4th. That's in person. Uh, it's a, a live event come on in and silent auction. It's really fun. Um, a it's lot of great- so much fun. It's our best event. Uh -huh. it's, yeah. It's the greatest. We've already had inquiries about this dog. So <laughs> <laughs> this dog is gonna be a hot item, I guess. Uh, the next following day is a uh, Saturday is our big art and supply book. Lots of art books for sale. That's first come first serve. The line usually starts forming around what, nine, eight thirty nine? Uh, it's like Filene's basement. It wraps around the art center and everybody brings big bags because they know they're going to leave with a big stash. Yeah. So brushes, paints, papers, canvases, frames, you name it. Books, plexiglass. We have a giant stack of plexiglass for some reason this year. So, <laughs> uh, and then new, new this year, is a Sunday portion yes. um, where everything that's left will be 50% off. Yeah. So even, even cheaper than it was anyway. So <laughs> hope you can plan that in. Okay, let's, let's try Jackie one more time here. Susie's still connecting. Jacqueline, um, uh, uh, hello. Hello. <gasps> wow. Okay, that's very echoey. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Susie. Oh, Susie. That's, oh, that's Susie? Yeah, it is. Okay, Susie. <laughs> Hello. Let's talk to you, Susie. <laughs> okay. Good. Let me get to your, uh, to your work here. I love your pieces, Susie. I really, really have enjoyed them. Oh, good. Yes, I am a I am a toothless wonder today. I'm in the middle of dental work, so I am really a pirate. So you guys will just have to love me and um, let <laughs> me slide by missing a front tooth. Me. Okay. Yeah, we're just happy to have you, Susie. We're glad that you were got the sound going here. So thank you. So you've got a couple of, of pieces that are um, probably, I want to say, the most sort of traditionally representational works in the show. And um, I just loved kind of reading your statement here about how you're finding um, a lot of inspiration in interior life. So tell us more about that. I just seem to find myself in places at different times in my life and I have a lot of time. For instance, this one here of my bookcase in my studio um, is actually a piece of furniture that my husband found alongside of the road and refinished it and it ends up being my flat files. Oh. And when I moved to Florida, we had all these shelves and I could put a lot of my books in those shelves. But as I place things around, it just started to be so much memory um, of my life, of my family. 
And of course, I love lamps and the lighting they create on the objects, whether they're just a piece of paper or an old radio or maybe a painting, uh, which I love to include other paintings in paintings. Yes. And um, they all come together for me in um, a lot of um, familiar things that, are, that just, I don't know, I'm an only child. I love all this familiar stuff. Of course, being 80, I may have to um, be starting to get rid of some of these wonderful things. But up in the top bookshelf that in a book that's a slant is my mom's house and garden plant book. Oh, Ed. No. And I just, um, it just means all so much to me how light falls on different simple objects and how it illuminates individual colors and how um, it just is something that I look at every day and I that just gives me so much joy. I, I yes. it sounds crazy now today after COVID, this whole countertop is filled with all kinds of paper trash and junk. So my life really changed a lot <laughs> during COVID, and um, and yet I have new paintings on the easel getting ready to start that might just include a window seal at my daughter's house, and the actual objects on. This is from my daughter's house of the actual objects on the windowsill. And then behind that is the landscape, which uh, is just a wonderful combination of light and dark. And, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. this particular interior was when my daughter had been ill for quite a long time and she's doing well now, but I spent a lot of time at her home. Oh. And um, my Maalox is there also with a bottle of water <laughs> and my suitcase and maybe some old shoes somewhere and, um, and the door um, in this in the uh, spare bedroom um, doesn't quite close like a door should. But when I started painting this after I did my initial drawing in a kind of a sepia color, it just seemed like a mystery to me. Like, I wonder what's going on in that closet. And really, yes. for me, it's, you know, just a bunch of old clothes, but in a lot of my grandson's things. But then <laughs> the light on the door just fascinated yeah. me and how it fell on other things and uh, Yes. Uh, you know, I spent time in that room alone and I love, I love oil paint. I love to begin a painting in a very traditional drawing. And then I use the, uh, the sepia or the burnt umber color or um, sienna color to make the darks. And then I start adding the light and the color and then it all comes together. And um, I, st I love those brushes and I love those um, kind of hidden edges, but um, I really do find a lot of uh, joy from working in this way and painting things that are familiar to me. Yes, I, they, they are so intimate. And it, I really have the feeling of how lovely lovingly rendered um i i can only imagine it becomes a meditation especially the study uh view with all of the the books and the it just i'm sure it's becomes its own i i don't even know what happens what, what can, i can only imagine yeah i think it's it, i think uh, the, uh, Go ahead, Susie, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, you know, it's, it's a really interesting look at how differently maybe some of us approach understanding, you know, the world and relationships. Some of us are um, very focused on the exterior, the exterior of ourselves and our relationship to the exterior. And, and in Susie's work, I see a lot of um, a search for meaning and understanding, um, looking in towards the interior of not only the house, but 
um, the house is a metaphor for oneself. So I, right. I, I enjoy the paintings for that kind of um, reason, in addition to the lovely subtle reflections yeah. here and just beautiful sense of light. Um, we had a couple of comments in the chat room um, about these, um, how somebody said it kind of looked like a um, Hooper or Hopper, mm. Hopper-ish. Um, yeah. And then um, the, just the familiarity of these rooms, even though we've never been in them, I think we've all been in a room like them. You know, they remind me of um, my grandma's place and that open door, yeah. you know, both yeah. feeling both feeling comfortable in your family's home and also sort of uncomfortable because, you know. <laughs> of what's going on, really, you know, at times, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a great joy. I am uh, very obsessed with my daughter's windowsill downstairs and usually in the evening when the sun, when the sunset comes through this actual window, I'm upstairs when I'm, you know, this is a location that is upstairs, but, when I'm down in the kitchen, I usually like to try and go there and keep out of people's way. I um, seem to get kind of chatty sometimes when my daughter's preparing dinner. So when I can go into this um, downstairs kitchen and look out that window and um, enjoy the different times and seasons I've been in that kitchen, and doing, I, I have a sketchbook practice, which I've had since college, but I love to just do small watercolors of that windowsill and oh, watch them change. It's just oh. all very exciting to me. I see a show of, of the windowsill. I see a show of those, of those watercolors. Have you thought about that? Just oh yeah, oh, I have. That would be lovely. Oh wow. Well, I would yeah. love that. Let's let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, I love to also put drawings next to finished paintings. So yes. the watercolors next to a finished painting are would be very fun. It's a great time to really study the light and the and the and the dark and the light together are uh, just so fascinating to me. I'm traditional in, and that's the name of that tune. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, it's exciting to me to be in the petticoats and see how people evolve there. Um, and, uh, you know, Mary Dupree just joined us and wow, mm -hmm. to go from Harry Potter to those beautiful abstracts is very interesting to me. But I, I'm drawn to what I do. And, uh, and I love to put like my husband reading the Sunday papers in, in those uh, paintings. Yes. It works. It works for me. <laughs> and for us. Yeah, beautiful work, Susie. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for this precious time. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for sharing. Okay, Jackie, I see you. <laughs> Can I hear you? I'm asking you to unmute. I'm unmuted. Yes, wow. we did it. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there, Jackie. I know for, sometimes- Thank you for hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about your work. Um, let me get to it here. Uh, yeah, uh, you, so you have this beautiful watercolor yeah. painting called Twisted View. And uh, I, I was just curious about, you know, <clears throat> what inspired this kind of topsy-turvy world here. It, it, it reminded me of like all my anxiety during Hurricane Irma, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, a number of years ago, I went to a workshop uh, by Judith Basio, and uh, she suggested that uh, we try drawing with our left or our non-dominant hand. I am left-handed, and so uh, I tried drawing with my right hand and was surprised that I could do it mm. fairly well. Ah. Uh, and so... My interiors have been created. Uh, I draw each item uh, separately on a piece of butcher block paper. And uh, 
cut it out and then I arrange all of these items on another piece of paper and, uh, and when I get it to my liking I trace it onto my watercolor paper and paint. Wow. I did uh, still life and landscape for a number of years uh, and it's uh, since this workshop I've been doing a lot of interiors yes. and uh, it's fun it's uh, I'm inspired when I'm doing them um, to add different things um, creative backgrounds mm. a number of years ago I, I found a dog painting and uh, I, he was so great I I decided that uh, I should probably put put him in one of my paintings. And, uh, <laughs> so I like I, I like the the sort of visual relationship between uh, th this little dog here and the Buddha over here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> yes, and I'm intrigued by your process, and I'm I am so tickled by the outcome, and um, it's a a very gorgeous subtle palette as well. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. Jackie, how long have you been part of Petticoat Painters? I've been apart for about 11 years. However, I was invited probably 30 years ago by Marty Hartman and then Judy Axe to join. But I live in Bradenton, which is uh, Manatee County. And at the time, it was only Sarasota County artists who were invited and so when I was invited 11 years ago I said oh thank you but I don't live in Sarasota County and they said well we've expanded our membership uh -huh. and you are now eligible yay, said, yay right I said, <laughs> all right I'm very very honored to be a part of it yeah it's been a great group of, of friends and ladies mm. Yeah, that's, that's, I've always considered Sarasota and Bradenton and part of the, you know, the sort of greater Tampa Bay, even, you know, that it's just all one big community, interconnected community, especially the art community. You mentioned Judith right. Dazio, who of course was a, um, a very well-known um, educator and gallerist and artist in um, St. Petersburg. Yeah. Right. right. So, yeah, that's we're all connected. <laughs> Was there quite a few uh, uh, certifications and recognitions too, Jackie? Congratulations oh, on all you. those uh, all those titles following your your name. I know that represents a lot of work and a a lot of uh, honors. Well, thank you. Uh, I have to tell you, Florida watercolor. Uh, I was seventeen years before I finally got my signature oh it was a long struggle <laughs> uh, well it was inevitable yeah how could they not well, thank you <laughs> thank you well i'm glad that we um were able to get you on here jackie and hear from you and talk to you about your work um a great way to close out today's presentation um so thank you all for joining us and um listening to stories and sharing. Uh, like I said, if you want to share this in the future, it'll be on our YouTube page. Um, does it, oh, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> if not, we will um, ask you to please come in and see the show. It's up through March 6th. Um, you might pair it with a visit to the Trashy Treasures event Ooh. and see what you can find up here. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> Great idea, Nathan. But uh, we'd love to see you. Yeah, we'd love to see everyone. So here's our hours. Um, we're open on the weekends um, again, which is nice. Um, so we'll see you soon. Um, and thanks for thanks for coming today. Thanks Thank you, here. everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.